Good evening, I'm Pastor Mark, and on behalf of the Southside Church of God, we would like to welcome you to Transform. Thank you so much for tuning into this segment of Transform, where the Word of God will truly transform your life. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory this morning. We do thank you for this this morning. We do thank you for the day that we are about to celebrate. We thank you for the manifestation of deity in humanity. We thank you for the manifestation of Jesus Christ in human form, who died upon the cross and has saved us from our sins. Father, I pray this morning for your anointing from on high. I pray this morning, O oh God, that it is not me that does the speaking, but I pray that it is by the inspiration and the unction of your Holy Spirit who dwells within me. And I pray, O oh God, that these words, Father, would find good soil this morning. I pray, O oh God, that we would be encouraged this morning. Lord, no matter what we're going through, O oh God, that we would understand and be steadfast and unmovable and unshakable for the glory of you, O oh Lord. Father, we love you this morning and we praise you. Speak to us this morning by your Holy Spirit. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated this morning. This is a Christmas text. But I'm probably going to preach it in a way that you probably have not heard it before. Here's the title of this message this morning. Do you want to ax anxiety, disseminate despair, and destroy depression? This message this morning is basically going to be a how-to message. How do we ax anxiety? How do we disseminate despair? How do we destroy depression? Can I tell you this morning, that is not God's best for you. That God has something greater for you this morning. It's not God's will for you to walk around depressed and in despair and in anxiety. God wants to give you rest this morning. God wants, and, and here's the thing about it. It's not contingent on your situation. Here's what we do today. We want our, we think, if our situation will change, then my disposition will change. But I want to tell you something this morning. There is a God. You serve a God who is greater than your situation. You serve a God who can give you joy and peace and, and, and health and, and, and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful joy in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of a hard time, in the midst of going through the battle. God is a God who is above everything, who is above your battles, who is above your tribulation. And oh, hallelujah, if we could just get to the place that my joy, that my peace, that my level of anxiety is not contingent upon the situation. Think about this, this morning. If my levels of anxiety, of despair, of depression, rest solely upon God, how much depression do you think that I will experience? Is God depressed? How much anxiety do you think that I will experience if I understand that my God is with me? That my God says, it doesn't matter what anybody does unto you. I am with you. Do not fear men, 
for I am with you. My God says that I will meet every need that you have. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about where you're going to live. Do you not know that I clothe the, the, the grass in the field and, and I feed the birds and I will take care of you? If, I've truly, if I'm truly in line with that, how much anxiety do you think that I'll have? But here's what I know this morning. We are getting into the time of year that we call the holidays. Just a little heads up, that means holy days. Now I realize we don't treat them as holy days in America anymore. We treat them as money making days. But anyway, they were originally designed to be holy days. Where you reverence the Lord. But we're getting into the time of year. Christmas. It's supposed to be one of the most joyous times of year. But unfortunately, sometimes, to so many people, it's a time of great sadness. It's a time of great loneliness. It's a time of great despair. It's a time of depression. There are people who have lost loved ones, and they feel it the most this time of year. There are people that are separated from loved ones, and they, and they feel it the most this time of year. If you've had somebody pass away this last year or the year before, this time of year, at some point or another, you're going to miss that person. It's going to happen. But some people are totally and utterly in despair and depressed during this time of year. But here, I've got good news for you this morning. The angel said, I, I bring you glad tidings of great joy. There is born unto you this day in the city of David a Savior. He's going to save you from your anxiety. He's going to save you from your despair. He's going to save you from your depression. He's going, to, he's going to take all these things. I call it the great exchange. And he's going to take all this garbage and all this trash. And he's going to take it from you. And he's going to give you his joy, his peace, his long suffering, his love that is unconditional. Oh, he's going to take all your garbage and he's going to replace it with all his treasure. And I want to tell you, it doesn't matter what you're going through unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior. He is going to save you out of everything the devil tries to put on you. Don't you make no mistake. Your God will deliver you. I want to say it again. Your God will deliver you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You're not going down. You're going up. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that arises to condemn you shall be put down. Amen. You are the chosen of God. You are the elect. You are the church. You are the sons and daughters of the Most High. You are the, you are the son of a king. You are the daughter of a king. That makes you a prince and a princess. You are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. I didn't come to, to preach about depression. I come to preach about joy. I come to preach about Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I know as, as there's, a, there, the, there's a cure, there, there's deliverance from addictions. There's a deliverance from anxiety. There's a deliverance from despair. There's deliverance from depression. And it's in the same name. And that is the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Paul said, I don't want to preach anything but Jesus Christ. And him crucified. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you're going through it this morning. If it's been a bad week. Maybe it's been a bad month. Maybe it's been a bad year. Maybe it's been a bad life. I want to share some things with you. That can help you this morning. That can cause those chains to be, be, be released in you this morning, released upon you this morning. You don't have to live in this kind of stuff. God, he said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. How many know that anxiety, despair, and depression are the result of fear? That's the root of all of them. God says, I didn't give you that spirit. Can I tell you? Can I tell you, anxiety is not from God. 
Depression's not from God. Despair is not from God. It's from, a, it's from a, an entity known as Satan who wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. Oh, but I want to tell you about a God that has come so that you might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about this morning is the abundant life. So I, how can this change in my life? Now, I'm not talking about your situation. It might be a long time before your situation changes. But I want to tell you, your joy is not contingent on your situation. First thing you need to do is this. You need to change your thought process. Here's what the Bible says. As a man thinks, so is he. Pastor, I, I feel so down. I, I feel so depressed. I, I, I feel like there's no hope. Can I tell you? You need to change the way you think. You need to change your thought process. Think about this. Here's what we want to do. We want things in our life to change, but we don't want to change. We don't want to change how we think, and we don't want to change what we do. But I'm here to tell you, if you want change in your life, you've got to change the way you think. You've got to change what you do. As a man thinks, so is he. You are what you intake. The Bible talks about a, a, a physical man. And the Bible talks about a spiritual man. And here's the thing, they both eat. And you ever heard this saying? You are what you eat. Now can I just get a little personal here? Might be a little gross. But I notice this, the older that I get, and the worse that I eat, right? They say that you get older and, and you start storing up toxins. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is going to get ugly, all right? <laughs> and you know when you eat all kinds of chips and, 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 Cupcakes. What? Uh-huh. And you don't exercise. And that stuff just and that and, and that stuff just just starts to, to you know just build up in you. Right? And make no mistake, you know, look on a box of Twinkies. And here's the reality half of the ingredients, you won't know what they are. Huh? Now, that's not so with a tomato. I mean, you get a tomato, you see it right there, it's good, it's fresh, nothing nasty in it. Huh? But anyway, here's what happens, I found out. When I eat really bad, and then I sweat, it's nasty. It's toxic. You ever done this? Come on, share with me. Sweat at night. Huh? And your pillow's nasty the next day because all those toxins sweated out of your body. Well, not all of them, a lot of them. Huh? Hey, anybody ever been? Just me. I'm the only one that eats bad. Come on now. Huh? Well, you ever do this? You ever, you ever fast? And, you know, and you start getting those out of your system and your, your body just starts big headaches. You, you, you start, to, your breath is nasty. You know what I'm talking about. Because what you intake, right, is what's going to come out. Hear me. If, if you want to change the way you think, you've got to change what you put into to this mind, into this spirit man. And if we're putting junk food in it all the time, if we're putting the things of the world in it all the time, if we're listening to the propaganda of the devil all the time, guess what's going to come out? despair, anxiety, and depression. But oh, can I tell you, what's going to happen if you start putting the Word of God in your heart? What's going to happen if you start meditating upon the Word of God? I want to tell you what's going to happen is the Word of God's going to come out. And when the Word of God comes out, things change. Oh, hallelujah. I'm talking about a God who calls things that are not as though they are. I'm talking about a God who says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do. I'm talking about a God who never has it, who, who is never down. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And I'm talking about, oh hallelujah, taking on that nature. 
Because the Word of God tells me you partake of the divine nature by the exceeding precious promises of Almighty God. I'm talking about not, I'm talking about being lifted up where Jesus Christ is because that's what He said in His Word in Ephesians. You are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's not about, God has already done this. This is where we are. It's about changing your thought process and understanding who you are in Jesus. You are not a punching bag for the devil. You are the one that is, you are to put him under your feet and just that's what we do to, that's what we're supposed to do to him. He all authority has been given unto me. Therefore go. We think we don't have the weapons. We think we don't have the authority. Our thought process is wrong. Change the way we think. Put the Word of God in. Do you read this regularly? Can I meddle? I'm up here. I'm going to. <laughs> Hear your pastor. If your whole week, you go to work, and you come home, and your evening consists of watching television every night, getting on the computer and playing games and you never open your Bible your thought process is never going to change what are you putting into your spirit because can I tell you this you say well, well I watch good shows and I, that's good that's good you, should, you, you need to watch what you watch I might coin that you need to watch what you watch but here's the thing. It's still worldly. Say you can never watch anything? No, absolutely not. But you need, to, you need to use some wisdom. If you're doing everything else but never in the Word, your thought process is never going to change. And your life, listen, hear me out. Your life isn't going to change. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean God doesn't love you. It just means you're letting the devil beat you to a pulp. And you want God to do something about it, but you're not being obedient to Him. Listen to me. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You've got to be, you've got to know this. If you don't know this, how do you even know if I'm up here telling you the truth? How do you know that I'm not trying to put some kind of deception on you or, or introduce some strange doctrine if you don't know this? You've got to know this for yourself. I'll help you and I'll preach to you and I love to do it. But if all you get is what you get from me this morning, it's not enough. And that's not, and that's not a slight on my preaching ability. That's a little joke. But it's not enough. If you want to overcome despair, despair and depression and anxiety, you've got to put this word in your heart. If you don't, I'll pray for you till I'm blue in the face. And I will. You come up to the altar, I'll, I'll never not pray for anybody that wants prayer. But you're going to be limited. Because you're limiting what God is going to do in your life. You are. We have this insane idea that we can live however we want. And disobey God when we want. And we're going to be blessed. That's insanity. The next thing that you need to do. Change your focus. Change your focus. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Can I tell you something this morning? If you're the center of the universe, it's a sorry universe. Are you hearing me? If everything is about you, what a sorry life that is. It leads to nothing but, but, but despair and depression. Look at those people in Hollywood. Yeah, I'm preaching against Hollywood. That's right. They can't stay married. Huh? They go from one, one marriage to a next. Why? Because they're miserable. Because it's all about them. See those people that, that all they do is try to get rich. It's all about money. Are they happy? Absolutely not. Because here's the reality. 
if the universe is about you, you're living a lie. If you're the center of the universe, you're living a lie. And can you be, can you be healthy and happy and blessed in a lie? Because there's, there's someone who's the center of the universe. And he's called the Most High God. He's called the creator of heaven and earth. And everything revolves around him. The Bible says he upholds all things by the word of his power. And if you want to have a healthy life, if you want to, to have a life where you overcome depression and anxiety and despair, can I tell you, Jesus Christ has to be the center of your life. When he's not the center of your life, your life is off kilter. It's, it's not right. You don't work right. You don't operate and function the way that you should. Because here's the reality. God created you to operate and function a certain way. And it's according to his word. And when he's the center and the focal point of your life, you operate the way that you should. But when he's not, can I tell you, you're broken and you need to be fixed. But I've got good news for you. I know who can fix you. And his name is Jesus. But God has to be the focus of your life. It says all things are created by him and for him. You were created for God. Think about that. So, so when you don't honor him, love him, serve him, follow him, you're not doing what you were created to do. You are created for a relationship with Jesus. And when you don't have that relationship, there's a void. That's why people go and they're addicted to drugs and they're addicted to, to pornography and they're, they're wrapped up in the, in the addiction of, of, of money and, and possessions. They're trying to fill a void that only Jesus can fill because he's the one who put it there to fill his very own self. And if you're not content, it's because you, you don't have Jesus in the center of your life. He's got to be the focus. I need a couple uh, volunteers. How about Randy and Darlene? <laughs> if, if everyone agrees with that, say amen. amen. All right, here's what I need. We'll make Randy walk further, okay? Randy, I need you to stand right over here. Darlene, I need you to stand right there. Yeah, that, that right there is just fine. Okay. Yeah, that's about right there. All right. I need another volunteer. Tina. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and stand up. All right. Now all you got to do is stand there. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, to focus on Randy. Okay, are you focused on Randy? Okay. All right. Now I want you to, to focus on Darlene. Okay? Now while you're, while you're still focused on Darlene, okay? Stay focused on her. I want you to focus on Randy. That's right. That's right. You can't focus on two things at the same time. Now here's what we do. Now, now you're focusing on Darlene, right? Now can you kind of see Randy out of the corner of your eye? Right. And that's kind of how we do God. Are you hearing me? We're focused on ourselves, but we kind of got God in the, kind of in the peripheral vision on the outside. Uh, and we think we're okay with that. We think because God's, you know, we've got, we're conscious of God, everything's all right. But I want to tell you, it's not all right unless Jesus Christ is the focus of your life. And you, hear, hear me. You can't focus on two different things at the same time. So as any good preacher will do, I have to ask you a question. Where's your focus at this morning? Where's it at? Where's it at? Would you give them a hand? They were, they were great volunteers this morning. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face. And what does the song say? It says something will happen. Things of earth will grow strangely Dim. I'm thinking the man who wrote that had an experience with Jesus. That's what happens. Here, when you focus on Jesus, it doesn't necessarily mean your problems go away. But it means they, they're not as big as they were when you're focused upon Jesus. 
Because no matter how great your problems are, your God is greater. Are you hearing me? When, when, you, when you focus upon the glory and majesty of God, things of the earth seem like nothing. I love it when, when I hear the story of David and he's facing Goliath. The boy has absolutely no fear. Because even though Goliath was great and he was a giant, nine feet tall, his God was greater. Is God greater than your giants this morning? Well, here's what happens when we don't focus on Jesus. Our giants are huge. And our God becomes so small. But when we focus upon Jesus, our God is huge and our, our giants are so small. That's what David saw. The enemy was using Goliath that day. He cussed David out. He threatened him. He said, boy, I'm going to whoop you today. And David said, who are you, you filthy Philistine? I'm going to cut your head off today. And I'm going to feed you to the birds of the air. Who are you to come against the armies of the living God? Huh? Change your focus. Think about this. When David went against that giant, the whole army was behind him. Afraid. That giant was so huge. But David, he's been, oh, oh I'm preaching now. David's out in the pasture. And all he's doing is thinking about Jesus. Huh? He's writing songs and, and writing poems about Jesus. He's tending the flock and he's, and he's looking up at the stars and saying, God, what is man that thou art mindful of him? For a little while you've made him lower than the angels. And he's meditating upon God. And then he comes into the battle and his God is so huge and, and his enemy is so small. Oh God, give us the faith of David. Huh? Think about this. The fervent Effectual prayer of a righteous person is very powerful and effective. And you are righteous because of what Jesus Christ has done. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has given you a right to go to him and to petition him. And he says, I will grant your petitions. As long as they're not about selfish reasons. Hmm? The third thing, discover and fulfill your purpose. There's a story that always sticks with me, and it's, it's set in World War II in a, in a Nazi concentration camp. And what they would do, they, would, they had prisoners who were, who were Jews at that time, and they forced them into labor to, to help build up munitions and, and supplies for the war effort. And they did an experiment. After that, they stopped having them do that. And so what they would have them do, at one end of the camp, there would be a big pile of derbies. They would have them pick up those derbies, all of them, and they would have them move them to the other side of the camp. Then the next day, they would ha have them pick up them derbies, and they would have them move them back to the other side of the camp. And they had them do this every day. They would just move them from one side to the next. And here's what happened. Here's what they noticed. People would kill themselves. They would run at the guard towers and, 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 and where they knew they were going to get shot and they would get shot. And here's what they deduced. When they were building supplies for the Nazis for the war effort, even though they were, they didn't want to do it. And even though, you know, it was against an effort against them, there was a purpose to it. And they could understand it. But when they just moved the, the derbies from one side of the camp to the other, day after day after day, it drove them crazy. We live in a crazy world today. You know why? Because people feel they have no purpose. See, here's the, here's the reality. If you think that, that, you, that you're descended from a monkey, and you're just a random accident of chemicals getting together, you have no purpose. There's no reason for you to exist. We see, we see that kids go into schools and there's school shootings and one thing that, that is shown over and over is they feel that they have no purpose. They feel like the strong, the strong overpower the weak. It's not what the Bible says. You lift up and uphold the weak. There's a purpose for your life. Oh, hallelujah. If we could just get that in the school system. 
Just as a starter. Hey, guess what, kids? There's a purpose for your life. Do you know that God has created you for a reason? And it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter your mom and dad were a one-night stand. You're not an accident. There's a purpose for your life. And if we want to overcome depression and anxiety and despair, here's what I encourage you to do. Find your purpose in life. God has created you for a reason. There's a reason that you exist. He wants to fulfill a purpose in your life. And when you know what that purpose is and you work toward fulfilling that purpose, there is, there is joy and peace. And even though you go through difficult times, you, think you go through them and you're strong because of it because you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it. Think about this. Any great person that has ever succeeded has always had to go through affliction and, and, and despair and, and resistance. It's not an easy road. But when you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, you can persevere. People are in despair because they have no hope. They do not know why they exist. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That was God talking to Jeremiah. God is not a respecter of persons. Hear me out. Before you were born, God knew you. He sanctified you. He ordained you for a purpose. Here's what the enemy does. He tries to thwart God's purpose in our life. He wants to get us off the road that God has set upon us, set on us. He did the very same thing to Jesus. Jesus said, I came to this earth for one reason, to die. That's my purpose, to die for the sins of the world so that many sons and daughters can come into glory. Huh? He's in the wilderness temptation. What's Satan trying to do? Trying to get him to take the easy road out. Hey, if, if you're the son of God, why don't you just turn those stones into bread? Hey, if you're, hey, I'll tell you what, if, you, if you'll just bow down to me, I'll just go ahead and give them all to you. And you don't even have to worry about that cross stuff. Huh? Don't worry about what God has for you. You know, just go this route. But Jesus knew his purpose. And he would not be denied. Think about Peter when they're walking. Jesus says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. And I'm going to be crucified. And in th the third day, I'm going to rise again. And oh, Peter. Huh? Oh, no, Lord, not you. Get thee behind me, Satan. I've got a purpose. God has a purpose for me on this planet. God has a purpose for you on this planet this morning. And here's part of the adventure. To discover what it is. That's an adventure. What, what's your purpose? I'll tell you this. It's something that's on your heart. It is. You don't have a purpose that's totally foreign to what you want to do. It might be maybe you want to help the homeless. It's on your heart. Maybe you want to be a teacher or, or a preacher or, 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 or maybe you just want to be a prayer, whatever, a prayer warrior. Whatever God has it, but whatever it is, it's on your heart. It's what you, God doesn't give you a purpose to do something you absolutely hate doing. He's not that kind of God. He gives you a purpose. He gives you a purpose that he has created you to do. And it's according to your abilities and your gifts. Guess what? That's what I love about God. God doesn't call you to do something He has not gifted you to do. Think about that. Where do we get in problems in churches? I'll tell you a lot of problems are this. People are trying to do things God hadn't called them to do. Oh, can I, can I meddle one more time? And then when God has called somebody to do that, are you hearing me? They get offended because they're doing it. Are you hearing me? And they get mad. How can you get mad if you're doing what God's called you to do? And I like to, and, oh, this is getting good now. Think about this. Is there any way in this world that anyone 
can stop you from fulfilling God's purpose in your life. Because if they stop that, then they would have to stop God. The only person that can stop you from fulfilling your purpose is you. That's it. That's the only person. There's no principality. There's no power. There's no demon. There's no fall. There's dark angels. What? Satan? People? It doesn't. Nothing can stop God from fulfilling his purpose in your life except you. Because you have a will. And God says, this is what I want you to do. But you have every right to say, I'm not going to do that. But here's the thing. What a sad thing. You stand before Almighty God. And he said, I created you for this. And make no mistake. God has created you to make a difference in this world. He said, I created you to make a difference. And you made none. You took your talent. You buried it in the ground. I gave you so much to use. You could have been so fruitful. But you were wicked and you were lazy. How would you like to stand before God on that day? When you haven't done what God's called you to do. You haven't used the gifts that he's given you to use for his glory. I don't want to go to heaven. Say, God, I just lived my life. God, I just went to work every day. That's all I did. Don't get me wrong, it's important to work. God's called you for... I, ooh, oh. But do you make a difference where you work? It's, it's the place you work better because you're there. Huh? It's the presence of the Lord in your job because you're there. Huh? Or you just go do your thing, get your paycheck and go home. Hmm? Your job is your mission field. You want to overcome depression and despair and anxiety? Find your purpose. Find what God has called you to do. And he has called you to do something. And not just attend church. That's not a calling. That's a requirement. Huh? It is. That's what you do to be equipped to fulfill your call. Huh? Praise the Lord. He is so wonderful and he's so good. But this morning. And I want to encourage you to be here next week. Because this is going to go right along with it. God has something to say. And he just started this morning. Maybe it's been a bad year. Uh, change your focus. Change the way you think. Find your purpose. Here. And whatever you're going through, listen to me. He says that his grace is sufficient. He think, Lord, Father, I can't go another day. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. He is sufficient. His strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Praise His name. I'm determined to do this. I am determined to go higher and further in Jesus Christ in 2012 than I did in 2011. I'm determined to do that. Oh, man. I don't know if you know this sometimes, but sometimes pastors have bad weeks. Sometimes pastors have bad weeks. You know, there's people that, have, uh, that don't go to church anymore. Maybe you're watching by television. You don't go to church anymore because someone offended you and made you mad. Try being a pastor. Happens on a daily basis. Huh? That's no reason not to be in church. Huh? But can I tell you this morning, this wasn't the greatest week. It started out okay, but in the end, it just didn't get too good. You know? But as I'm praising God this morning, the spirit of heaviness lifted. And God is good. And guess what? I can go through next week. Because I was here this morning. And I've been re-energized. And I've, I've been refilled. And that's true. That's biblical. It's not just a one-time filling. It's a continual refilling. Because if you're doing what God's called you to do, you're emptying yourself out and you have to be refilled. Amen. And that's what, that's what should happen when you come to church. I want to encourage you this morning. You've gone through it this year, this week. 
God has something good for you. It's not the end. These momentary troubles are nothing compared to the glory that he has in store for us. And here's what happens when you go through it. You understand that you can't rely upon yourself. You have to rely upon God to get you through. And that's where he wants all of us to get to that point in life. Where we understand we can't do it. It's him. And it is because he's the author of everything. He gives us everything. Hands to feel. Air to breathe. It's all because of him. And, and, and without him, we have no life. None. We're dependent upon him. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. We live in a world that if you're dependent, they consider it a, 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 a bad thing. But I want to tell you, I, it's a great thing. I'm, I, I, I glory in the fact that God, I am dependent upon you. And I make no excuses and there's no shame in it. Lord, and here's my prayer, that I become more and more and more dependent upon you every day. Well, let's say it like this. I've become more in tune with reality every day because I am totally dependent upon God, whether I believe it or not. It's the truth. These people who don't love God don't know God. Make no, they still depend on God because He's the one who holds it all together. They're looking for the God, God particle. And here it is. And His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you please stand this morning? I want to ask you with, with every head bowed and every eye closed and just a real quick if, if, pastor I just I need special prayer I, I, it's been a hard week it's been a hard year and I felt depressed and, and I've been in despair and in anxiety and, and sometimes I don't know how I'm going to go on and could you just pray for me this morning could you just pray that God would give me strength, that, that, that I would, my, my thinking would start to be changed and my focus would be changed. And, and God, I just need you because I can't do this by myself. It's too hard for me. He said he's an ever-present help in a time of need. <laughs> he said, come boldly to my throne whenever you need some help. I'll give you mercy and grace whenever you need it. That's his promise this morning. If you need prayer, say, Pastor, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. Say, Pastor, I want a prayer for me this morning. I want you to pray for me this morning. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person this morning that raised their hand. And Father, I pray this morning that you help them. I'm not going to pray anything fancy, but oh Lord, I ask for you to help them according to your word. Father, they have made the, the, the announcement, Lord, by their signaling of their hands that they need help. Father, Give them the help that they need. Father, I pray those who are watching by television, if you're out there watching and you need help, I encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and He will help you. I can't promise you it's always easy, but I can promise you He's always with you. And He will not put anything upon you that you cannot bear. That's his promise. And he will love you and guide you and teach you. And those nights when you lay awake and you cry, he'll hold you. He'll hold you. He loves you. And listen, and there's nothing you can do to ever change that. There's nothing you can ever do to make to where God will never love you. Nothing. Because he is love. Unconditional love. Something we don't have in this world. But praise God, our God is not of this world. Amen. Father, thank you for this, this morning. We give you glory and honor and praise. We love you. Oh, fill us, Holy Spirit. 
Fill us, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you.